Hello everybody, welcome back to your Kyungi Crisis. This is Twin Kill here, back to you with another Shadowverse Evolve video. This time we're going to be doing a bit of a different series where we will go over an upcoming prominent deck type, go over its strengths and what's going to make it a potentially powerful candidate for an upcoming mecha game or format or what have you. We are just here after the release of Booster Pack 6, Paragons of the Coliseum. Be sure to check out our winners and losers up here at the upper right corner. You want to check out that. And with that, we're going to roll the intro and get right into it. So for the first of this series, we'll be going none other than the spell chain deck updated with none other than the cover card of the booster set themselves, Kula Master of Omiyogo, who brings out the new Omiyoji archetype. We're going to break down why with this and legacy spell chain tools that the Runecraft class has why this will be a very powerful contender and one to watch out for. So let's start from the very beginning. Runecraft has always had access to very powerful spells that are able to answer early game boards that this upcoming mega game will throw out with aggro variants in the likes of Swordcraft, Abysscraft, even those in Havencraft across the Gemstone and Fable archetypes are still one to muster up. Runecraft, since the very beginning, has had access to very powerful ways to deal with early game boards, of course, because they want to play smooth anyway. There is nothing wrong with playing neutral and Joey Snipe or neutral Surefire Boy. These are all very powerful cards. But within Runecraft itself, Fire Tank is very powerful to take out up to two things for two costs that can really put a damper on decks that are really trying to go wide, especially across Aggro Abyss, Aggro Sword. Think being able to take out something like a 1 defense Ambling Rave and a 2 defense Fiend of Dynamite Daredevil in just one fell swoop. That is pretty powerful. You minimize four additional damage right then and there. So you definitely stay in the game pretty well. Moving into later expansions, Witch Bolt is a very good three cost answer that is very capable of taking out those bigger pesky threats that do reach that magic five defense. Think Galmu, Omen of Disdain, especially after she's used some stuff and Painting Prince, etc. that they don't evolve in Fable Haven. And of course, being able to draw a card by controlling and evolve for is very powerful. Rhyme Wing can easily set opponents back by a whole turn, thus buying you that additional time to fuel the cemetery with all of your spells. More on that in a bit. And all these spells that answer the majority of non-control or bulkier mid-range top ends, these will definitely buy you enough time to really keep the game going and allow you to buy the time you need as Runecraft to go towards your shenanigans. Now, we talk about setting up for the win condition, right? So a very big problem with Runecraft previously was simply that it really needed to buy a lot of turns to build itself for the magic spell chain count and being able to assemble a scary enough field. The classic spell chain that used a combination of things like Flame Destroyer, Micro Golem, and Dimension Shift, more on Dimension Shift later of course, is it took quite a lot of time to really set this up efficiently while buying the time to assemble it to the point where we needed to unravel play cards like Fiery Embrace to get additional ping damage in but for a hefty four play points that could have been quite the expensive investment while having enough play points at some point to assemble your lethal boards and all that. But the Omiyoji archetype helps add to this quite a bit in two folk. We'll start with a more obvious one, the fact that across the Omiyoji archetype we have cards like traditional sorcerer, demon caller, shikigami summons, and curse crafter guys all create the paper shikigami token, a goblin static choo-choo 
with last words, draw one, discard one card. Very powerful ability. You have a bunch of effectively magic owls slash Craig, Wizard of Mysterious that you just make in the form of tokens. While the fact that these also help generate real board presence, right? Traditional Sorcerer is already two cards. Demon Caller plus his Evolve is two cards. Curse Crafter is now two things on the board. You can actually start to assemble a real board presence while having the ability to damper your opponent's ability to make board presence in the earlier times of the game, game and then buy yourself enough time to tell the opponent to answer you before you unironically deal enough damage across your Paper Shikigami and Paper Shikigami summoners, so to say. And on top of that, by them having these last words to continue to siphon through the deck to continue to fuel the spell chain count, it adds additional momentum towards being able to use a later turn dimension shift for that extra turn because then we go over to another than the big boss themselves, Kuan, Master of Omiyogo. This thing is insanity. Okay, 15 printed costs. We all know that's fake. If anyone has played the digital game, played during the Ultimate Coliseum format, y'all know where this is going. So in order to keep with the Cyrus Evolve idea of we can't exactly do spell boost, we can kind of do more spell chain, right? Kuo cool, Master Omiyogo's casting cost gets reduced for, of course, by one for every spell in the cemetery. whoop de doo On top of the Omiyogo trait, non-spells. So Shikigami card summons will not count for double because it is both a spell and an Omiyogo card. It will just be one because it is a spell. But all of these demon cards and traditional sorcerers and curse crackers are going to end up in the cemetery at some point. These will also count towards Kuam, Master Omiyogo's cost, and that will allow them to be propped onto the board on top of making additional board presence with the aura, kind of sizable Celestial Shikigami token, being able to engage themselves to give Paper Shikigami Storm, let's be all fair here, on turn 7, turn 8, it's most likely zero is complete insanity. It is utterly dangerous. And that definitely gives you the seven play points you need to banish all of these real spells you set up in the cemetery to play Dimension Shift as a seven cost spell. Get give yourself that additional turn and that will most likely be 20 or more damage across followers and so on. On top of the fact that you can still play spells like Truth Education from Booster set 5 Omens Eternal, that is also another way to do additional damage. And in case you haven't known by now, Runecraft also has access to the ability to heal this time versus previous sex. So Booster set 4 gave it access to Concentration, Show of Loyalty, 4 got Easy, Heal 3, Draw 1. We're not going to go for the Earthrise second draw here. Playing things like Gingerbread House, It's a Sweet Buffet, that's not going to really fly in this deck, but that is perfectly fine when the likes of Traditional Sorcerer can also act as additional heal when the right conditions are met. That will definitely give the Runecraft class this Runecraft deck based on this spell chain Omi Yoshi Shenanigans, the ability to buy the crucial turns it needs, it needs to make sure that aggro doesn't run away in the first four turns of the game again, use the latter half, five, six, seven, eight to get towards that perfect lethal with Kuam and Dimension Shift working in tandem. Of course, Merlin from way back in booster set one really helps with get searching for the crucial special league. Unironically searching dimension shift to really try to point, hey, you don't have much time left, you need to do something or else I will win. And reusing a previously discarded or use spell to continue to set your opponent back further with either it be heal or answering the board, it doesn't matter. You will simply have all of this toolboxing to really, really have that crucial time you need to get there. Curse Cracker also having built in two instances of damage to board is also insanity. 
don't need to go over why they, they trap in each game to restrict the guy to one right <laughs> we did that already and across all that you just have a deck that's really good at playing massive tempo while also threatening a clock going there paper shikigami penguin soldiers going there getting a set up deck easy cemetery count four cool on four dimension shift legos that is all part of the plan so to say the this mean really means that runecraft in general does not have to add just such that they delay their legal by so long that other guests can still find a way to cut them off from said legal which is why this deck is Okay, consistent, very good at answering the board, very good at setting up a though that it will be roughly the same song and dance across the vast majority of matchups. And with that, that is why the spell chain deck modernized with the likes of Kuang and the Omiyoji allies will make for a very formidable deck. So with that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you plan on playing spell chain runecraft yourself with all these updated tools? Do you think you have a way to really stop them? We're not going to go over that. That'll be more for probably a different video. But feel free. we we'll have a little discussion down below. And we'll, with that, continue to embrace the guns. And we will catch you all over in the next video. Bye-bye.